cosine. As I said, again, we've looked at these before, but so the approach here in this handout and in the textbook is that you've never seen sine and cosine before, but we have. The, the way the calculator works is exactly like tangent. You have the button that says sine or cosine. This is going to take these things and it's going to give you numbers that look like this. What's the difference between those two numbers, those two types of numbers? One of them is what type of number? What are these ones that are in the brackets here? They're whole numbers. Where would they be from in a triangle, you think? What kind of numbers are they? These are the, these are the angles. Okay, that's the angle. What's the number you get out at the end here, though? What does the calculator give you? If you push the sign button, you put in an angle and it gives you the, the ratio, the sine ratio. Okay? The things in blue there are the sine ratio for each of those angles. That's the ratio. That's the angle. That's important to know. You should probably maybe make a note of that on there. Just the, the regular old sine, cosine, and tangent button. You put in the angle, and it gives you the ratio. And the same goes for cosine, right? You put in the angle, and it gives you the ratio. The inverse buttons, how, do, how are they different? How are they different? What are we putting in here? What's, what's inside the brackets in here? When you do sine inverse of something, like right there, this is the ratio, right? That's the ratio, and it gives you the angle. The angle looks a little weird there, 4.99999, right? But it's just the reverse of what we had over here. Here we put in sine of 5, and it gives you 0.0087. Here you put in sine inverse of 0 0.087, and does it give you 5 back the way you would expect? It almost gives you 5 back. What does it give you? 4.999. Maybe it'd be better if you see, saw the actual calculator here, right? So if I go if I go sine of 5, it gives me that number. If I go sine inverse of that number, 0.087155742 it gives me really close to 5, but really there's more decimal places the calculator's not showing. That's why I don't get quite back to 5. If I was to go um, if I was to go sine of 5 and then go sine inverse of, most calculators have a button like this, answer. Oops. If I go sine inverse of answer, what is that going to do? Sine in, what does that answer thing do on this calculator? It takes the previous answer and uses it. So if I go sine inverse of that number, what should it give me? It should give you 5. When you do that, it actually keeps all the decimal places. Those buttons are inverses of each other. That's why this one's called sine inverse. Okay, but we've talked about that with tangent. It works exactly the same way. Okay, one takes the angle and gives you the ratio. One takes the ratio and gives you back the angle. Um, as you go through here, this is going to be this first question. Again, it's going to be there... This is from the point of view that you've never seen sine before, so this should be a piece of cake for you to write those ratios. You're not looking for the angle or anything. You're just writing the ratios, right? Trig ratios, so that's a bit of review for you. And then using the calculator, it's review in that we did it with tangent, and it works the same way, so it's going to give you a chance to kind of get those things again. And then we're going to start looking at using the ratios to find angles or sides, all right? Make sure you read the titles again as you work through these, okay? Make sure you read the titles. That's going to be determining an angle. Look at the picture and see that the angle's missing. But you're going to follow the exact same kind of process we did before. You got to, here it's a bit trickier because you got to decide, am I using sine? Am I using cosine? What am I doing? If you're trying to decide what you're using, look at the sides that you have. Some of you are trying to do that warm-up today and weren't looking at what sides you have. I would say from this angle, decide what that side is and actually write it on the picture. That's the opposite side. And then decide what this side is. That's the hypotenuse. You have the opposite and the hypotenuse involved. So you should, you should either from memory or looking at that data sheet, which ratio does that involve? It involves sine, right? So I would put down sine of the angle, which is theta, is 984 
over 3514. How come the 984 goes on top? Yeah, that's the way it goes, right? That's the, that's the opposite, the hypotenuse. Just to make sure you've got it the right way there. When you're using sine or cosine, the top number, this is something good to know. Remember that we looked at the sine ratio can never get more than one. The sine ratio can never be more than one. Remember I showed you uh, something here. Let me. Okay, so remember we looked at this, that you're, if you increase this angle, your sine ratio is never going to be more than one. Even if you flatten the thing out here, you're never going to get to be more than one. The highest the sine ratio can be is one. If you look at the two sides here, sine ratio can't be more than one because this can never be more than this in a right triangle. You can't have the... You can't have the opposite side bigger than the hypotenuse. So when you divide them, this is never going to be more than more than one, right? If you have a really small angle, the sine ratio is small. If you have a really big angle, sine ratio is big, but the biggest it can be is one. So wh when you're solving problems, use that to think about whether your answer makes sense. When you're solving that problem that we were just looking at, first of all, when you write the ratio, just use that idea to make sure you've written this the right way. If you look at it and you notice that the top number is bigger than the bottom, you've probably written it down wrong. And if you're if you're solving for a side and you end up with the top number bigger than the bottom when you're using sine, you've probably done something wrong. So that's that first step, right? Label the label the triangle and write trig equation. Number 2 Solve your trig equation. And then, you know, figure out what the answer is from how from your solution, from how you're solving it. If it's a problem where there's no picture given, you might have another thing where you have to draw a picture first, right? I would say draw a picture if there isn't one there, or write on this picture, label the picture. That's part of the reason I photocopied for you because I want you to be able to write on it. Like this one, doesn't have a picture. Write, it, Draw a picture, then write a trig equation. You should be able to get to that, um, that answer that's there. So I didn't, I didn't finish this, but we will right now. Let's make this a color that's a little bit easier to see. So there's your, there's your trig equation. You're going to solve your trig equation. To find the angle, again, you've got to use sine inverse of whatever this number is. I'm just going to leave this in brackets, but you could actually write down the number if you wanted to, although it's better to leave it till the end. And then when you find that, okay, if you go to your calculator again here, just divide the numbers. You can either you can either divide the numbers first and then do sine inverse, right? Like you could go nine eight four divide by thirty five one four, depending on whatever's easier on your calculator, and then doing sine inverse of that number, getting sixteen point three degrees. If you're going to the nearest tenth of a degree, or you could go all in one step here and do sine inverse. 984, not 384. 984 divided by 35, If you happen to be talking right now, could you not? Okay. So either way there, okay? Whichever way you're, uh, whichever way you're approaching it on the calculator. At this point, I think you have enough uh, background on writing trig ratios, solving it depending on where the variable is, and coming up with that answer that you probably should be able to work through this section mostly uh, fairly independently.